If Hashem regrets creating the Yitzhahara, why does He not abolish it? The Gemara says that there are a number of things that the Avishna regrets, and one of them is the creation of the Yitzhahara. There are many, many Maimorei Chazal that speak to ideas that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is not happy about. For example, the idea of Bainai Eilam Esmachriva and creating worlds and destroying them. Or the Loshan HaMedrash, Dein Hanyan Lei, Vedein Lei Hanyan Lei. This one I get pleasure from, this one I don't get pleasure from, and so on. And amongst them is also the union of the Yetzir Hara. If I had to answer this question in succinct words, I would put it this way. There are things that Hashem wants and there are things that Hashem needs. Hashem regrets creating the Yetzir Hara because He doesn't want them. Hashem doesn't destroy the Yetzir Hara because He needs them. al Rebbe says in Tanya chapter 22, Why did the Abish to create Klippa? Why did the Abish to create Acherayim? Why did the Abish to create the possibility for error and for mistake? And the answer is for challenge. So it's true that the Gemara says that Kaddish Baruch Hu Meschadat, Hashem regrets making it because He sees the challenges it brings to His children. But at the same time, He also knows the reward. The Rebbe, many Sikhs in the, whatever, the late 60s and the 70s and the Chofs and the Lamets where the Rebbe used to have big Fabrengenish. And the it was known that those Fabereng and Nishin were to the Welt. They were not just for Hasidim. <coughs> the Rebbe would bring up this point over and over and over again. That the Eibishter is not a mean Eibishter. He's a kind Eibishter and a good Eibishter and a loving Eibishter. Why does he make it so hard? And in each Fabereng, the Rebbe would ask the question slightly differently. And in each Fabereng, he would answer the question slightly differently. But the essence of it is, if it would be not hard, it would be meaningless. The Ebish does not want Lamasiya Decha Tikhsev, it shouldn't be Nama de Kisufa. It shouldn't be Lecha Maslos. It should be earned by us. So as much as he dislikes the Yetzirah, he has no choice but to create it. And like I mentioned, there's a number of different expressions that say the same. And, uh, and I want to uh, use this opportunity to explain the Pasik in Eishas Chayel. Um, Eishas Chayel is a beautiful uh, tefillah, Sukim which we say, of course, Friday night. And it's a song that we sing for the Neshama. And the reason we're singing the song for the Neshama on Friday night is because the whole week the Neshama is out in the world. And it's involved in Avedis Habirudim, in Lamatas Malachas of Shabbos, correcting and introducing newness and change to the Abishta's world. But Kol and Becheska Sakon, it's dangerous, it's risky. Just like you can elevate sparks, it can be drawn down by, by negative forces. So when Shabbos comes and the Neshama goes away from that endeavor and raises itself up and it gets involved with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you praise the soul and say, it's amazing, the Neshama survived. And as I told you in previous classes, when you read the Eishas Chayel, you're describing this incredible woman. She's both a manufacturer and a merchant, and a salesperson, and a marketer, an industrialist. She has one problem from the perspective of the feminist model, that everything she does is for her husband. Everything is for Bailo. Which, of course, how do you understand that? And the answer is because her husband is a Kaddish Baruch. So the Neshama is describing, is being described in Eishas Chayel as doing all kinds of services, working and creating and so on, and everything is for her husband. And one of the most significant psukim in that sequence is Velechem Atzlos Loi Seichel. She'll never eat lazy bread. These words, Lechem Atzlos, in the language of the Zayr, is Nama de Kisuf, of bread of shame. Bread of shame means something you didn't earn. In the words of the Gemara, Odom Reitzah Betav Kav Shalei Betisha Kav Shachaveri. You'd prefer to have one measure that you earned fair and square than what you got for free that's nine times as much. And the Abish that designed his world and his creation, his most precious creation, which is the human being, with that basic principle in mind, it shouldn't be free. So as much as the Ebesh is mischaret, what the Yitzhahara does to us, for Yachal, until the time comes when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Sheikhet to the Malach HaMovis and to the Sotan and to the Yitzhahara, he doesn't like him, he regrets making him, but he needs him. Because this is what creates <coughs> the Avoida and the success and the idea of partnership, should from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, my Sebereshis, is the challenge that the Ebesh gives us in our lives. And of course, this is no excuse. We got to do the work 
and fight and defeat the Yetzir Hara and appreciate, like the Altarebbe brings in Tanya, Moshla Zainash and Bezeir HaKadosh, that the only reason the Yetzir Hara is there to add more meaning to our being servants of HaKadosh Baruch Hu.